Hello, class. This is Professor Khan joining you today to talk a little bit about reader response. So if you've looked at paper three instructions uh, and or viewed the paper three patient where I just go over those instructions with you, uh, you know that one of the requirements of paper three is to compose an introduction and a conclusion using what we call reader response. So I want to explain a little bit about what that is here and give you an example of reader response. Um, reader response is a literary theory. So is formalism. Formalism is a theory that we are using primarily in this class. But it's not the only theory that we can use to approach literature with. Theory as a set of tools, um, a set of ideas and a certain approach that we use in order to read and analyze and write about literature. There's a whole wide variety of theories out there. Like I say, focusing on formalism in this class, dabble a little bit with reader response. If you look in the A paper real on Blackboard, I give you summaries of a handful of other literary theories, psychological theory, political theories, biographical theories. There's a wide variety of them out there. So reader response is just one of many potential theories that we use to examine and literature with. We call them theories, again, because there are possible ways. It's not the way. There's not just one way that we can approach a short story and have that and think of that as the only way to approach that short story. There are multiple other approaches out there that can be used. So, let's just kind of go over this document. It's a pretty short document that explains a reader response. I'll read some of this stuff directly and I'll paraphrase other stuff. Reader response assumes that culture in general demands that we as readers step up and meet the work of the reader at least halfway. We as readers really need to interact with a work of literature. For that work to fulfill itself. Readers cannot really be passive. We can't just sit back and wait for the work of literature to uh, engage us or to work its magic on us or whatever. We need to sort of at least halfway. And that's true, I think, in a variety of approaches to literature, a variety of theories, but it's especially true in reader response. Reader response critique says that it is the reader's own reaction to a work that is the most important. And I'll read that again. Reader response critique says that it is the reader's own reaction to a work important. It's not the teacher's response or reaction or interpretation. Uh, it's not anybody else's. It's not even the author's. It's the reader's. So I find that students really love this, <laughs> and I think you can understand why. Um, it is possible to write entire papers using the reader response. I stress to you that paper three is not a reader response paper. A formalist paper, 
but you will be using some reader response technique in your introduction and conclusion. Only place you're going to use it. Reader response says that we don't need any other literary theory to read and analyze and interpret a story. We don't need to know anything about the author or the author's life and times. We don't need any sort of psychological or political, cultural, or historical context to understand the story from a reader response perspective. Reader response simply asks us to respond perfectly to a work of literature that it demands such a response. The literature stand alone. It needs us and our responses to complete it. So I've got a couple of quotes here from some textbooks that I've read in the past. I think offer some pretty good summations of, of uh, the main gist behind the response. The Prentice Hall Pocket Guide to Writing About Literature says that the focus of the reader response critic is on the reader rather than the work. I really like that. Reader response criticism focuses on what texts do or in the mind of the reader, <laughs> rather than looking at a text or something with properties exclusively its own. It explores the reader's experiences of a work, it considers the ideas that are brought to the text, ideas that no other readers might have, and it cons uh, considers how the text deals with those ideas. the many worlds of literature, uh, the authors state that reader response is a school of criticism that takes issue with the tenets of formalism, which holds that the meaning of a work resides exclusively in the text. So reader response is sort of against formalism in a sense. Advocates of the reader response approach argue that, in a very real sense, the work of literature exists within the mind of the readers as an ever changing response to cues in the text. The writer have intended the work be read by one type of reader, but the reader's response is conditioned by needs and expectations quite unique to the reader. So, to sort of say that last sentence the way, the writer may have certain intentions, but those don't matter <laughs> in reader response theory. The only thing that matters is what the reader gets out of the story. So, frankly, that means that a reader response can ignore certain parts of the story and privilege other parts of the story as being more important or more meaningful than formalism uh, or other really approaches to literature. But reader response, I think, can allow for that. So, uh, in this, I talk about or I write a little bit about the two different schools of reader response and the two different approaches to reader response. Uh, the associative and the receptive. Uh, in paper three instructions, I'm really urging you to use an associative response. Those are much more fun to read anyway. <laughs> They're certainly more fun to read. Uh, in an associative reader response, the reader gives associative analyses or an associative connection to short story. 
They offer up a very personal and wholly subjective interpretation of a story. So these interpretations and meanings are based in, and in fact derived from, the person's life and experiences. And the meaning they derive from may be entirely personal and even to be understood by others. So for instance, a reader response associate approach may discuss a personal experience that is unique to the reader. That experience may be something that is similar to something that happens in this. Uh, it may be an experience of studying the story in, in, a, in a, a previous time. Um, it could be, you know, you, you know it's very similar to one of the characters in the story. You are associating yourself with aspects of this. That's why we call this the associative responsible approach. Uh, associative responses might rely upon collections of words that are very personal and not notative or common. A connotation is an additional or extra meaning of a word. Image. And that might be very personal to you. It might be something that no one else really understands except you. An associative response uh, reader response can also take the form of a review, review where the reader um, gives an evaluation of the work. You know, it's good, it's bad, it's great, it's fantastic, it's terrible. These parts are good, these parts aren't good. So you sort of act like a movie reviewer. These types of Responses might also delve into the life of the reader, discuss it, and help them understand themselves better. So that's an associative sort of range of possibilities. And once again, in, in paper, I'm really urging you to, to explore associative reader response introductions and conclusions. Uh, just very quickly, since I want you to focus on this, receptive reader response is really more about. Um, coming up with the status quo in terms of the story. So that means basically what the, the average, you know, English teacher is going to teach the story in a class, you know, what, what it is that you should discover about the story based upon, you know, years and years and years. And Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, really, you know, most careful and critical readers are going to get the story anyway. Uh, there's it's known as explication. You may have heard about it. You may have done some of this English class. We usually use explication when we talk about poems. We basically kind of go line by line in a poem, call out. On here in this line, what sort of symbols are used? What sort of imagery is used? What metaphors are, are used, and what do they mean? And you just sort of do that line by line by line, and you can explicate stories as well. So that that's a worthwhile practice. That's a worthwhile you know activity. That is not really what I want you to do. For the paper. So again, for Paper three, you will use the active reader response technique or strategy or approach to create a good hook in your introduction and then a nice sort of sign off, if you will, in your inclusion. You can write entire papers using reader response. We're not doing that. We're borrowing some reader response ideas and techniques to help us engaging and interesting intros, introductions that hook us as readers and conclusions that gracefully, elegantly, and with interest and our evidence. 
So let me give you an example. Uh, stories I'm having you read for this module. Not, it's not it's not a story you can write about for paper three, but it's a story that I want you to read. And I'm going to quiz you over it. It's a lovely, just absolutely beautiful story. I think of Arabi, my Jews' choice. Uh, Arabi is a, a young lad who is uh, sort of with his crush that he has on the girl next door. And uh, in order to sort of impress her and gain her attention, um, he goes to a, uh, something called an Arabi. That's not really a word we use in this country, this, this modern era, but an Arabi is basically a bazaar or a market that contains sort of exotic uh, wares evoke uh, you know, maybe the, the, the far east or the Middle East. So he's going to go to this market. The story takes place in Dublin in uh, the early, early century. Uh, he's going to go to this market in order to find something to buy and give to this girl. That's the basic plot. So I'm going to read here in a moment, read you some paragraphs of reader response, um, which I my own experience to what happens in the story. Uh, this example will focus on experience that aligns with the story. Certainly, a personal experience does not have to be 100% parallel to a story's plot. Sometimes that might happen, but there are unique experiences. Uh, it's an anecdote. It's a very short story. It's personal. So that means it relates to me. You know, and I am going to use the first person pronoun. About an experience that I had. Personal experiences can involve, you know, involve friends, they can involve family. As long as you're willing to share it with others, it's, it's, um, it's possible to use as, as resource material for a response. Uh, anecdotes, short stories, very stories, um, very short. Paper three, we really just want you to confine it to one paragraph. Uh, we'll still want to use details and description. Send detail, visual if possible. And at the end of this reader response, I transition of that into the story itself. So I'm going to bring up the author, bring up the full title of the story. And then my statement of central idea. Here I call it the central effect of the story of the central idea. Okay, so um, this example is actually three paragraphs long, uh, so it's much longer than what you need. But I went ahead and just wrote it out um, just to you know, show what can be done using multiple techniques to the anecdote. The summer after my seventh grade year, I began my first official job as a clerk at the gift shop at the city zoo. My mother had been doing volunteer work at the zoo for many years and had tipped me off to the job opening. The gift shop was a small wooden building near the exits, a pair of revolving doors made of metal bars. During the summer days, I worked behind the counter, bringing up purchases of stuffed toys, zoo animals, coloring books, and stickers, and magnets. The building smelled of new wood, sawdust, and the frigid air blasting the window with air conditioner. When there were no customers, I would sit and read, 
listen to my Van Halen cassettes on the portable behind the counter, and occasionally hunt down the room that sometimes flew in when the front door was open. That summer, I developed a crush on a girl who also worked at the shop. This girl, I cannot even recall her name, was nice, pretty, and talks to me. Hence, my crush on her at that young age. We never worked together, but we would see each other at shift change, and when I would find some excuse to linger and talk with her as I pretended to be up and collect my things. One day, there was a fundraising carnival at the zoo, with all the classic low-budget carnival attractions, the dunk tank, the fishing pole, the duck pond, I worked the morning shift, and as this girl arrived to begin her hours, I decided to tour around the club to try my luck at winning some little trinket sent to her and win her affection. I did win it, a small plastic horse, but I forget which game I won it at, and I did present it to her all very coolly, of course. When I returned later that afternoon, triumphant, and gave her the gift, she smiled, thank you, and it was all very nice. But that's as far as it went. We worked the rest of the summer together, started the semester at different middle schools, and never saw each other again. Most everyone remembers his or her first date. Most everyone remembers his or her first love. But what about your first crush? Although I do remember some things about this girl, a sweet, sad little attempt to woo her. She was not my first crush, the details of which I cannot even remember. In the grand scheme of things, crushes are just that. Insignificant, unmemorable landmarks on the road to adulthood. However, in the moment, a crush can be all-consuming and all-important for a young person who is beginning to grow into and rightfully so, for navigating the new emotions associated with crushes pushes young people to maturity. This is one of the main ideas in Jane James Joyce's short story, but it is an idea that is reached only through Joyce's choice of setting and narrator. At least in these and of paper three. Okay, so again, this is much longer than what you need. You really only need one paragraph. But this is an example of a reader response. You know, I'm providing this kind of short note about an experience that I had that is similar in many ways to um, something that happens in the story area by Joyce. And at the end, I sort of comment upon the idea and transition into the story central idea of the author's name and the story name. This is just one way to an associative response. So, uh, if you have questions about reader response, if you're stuck on, on how to go about it, uh, I can prompt you, I can give you some, some assistance, uh, you know, tell me what story you're working with, and you can kind of there. Reader response is fun. You know, I hope you enjoy writing questions and conclusions uh, to paper three. Just make sure that you can find, you know, your reader response technique and strategy to 